Tomato, tomato, it don't really matter how you say it, as don't start together here, bloody calls them Toma Roots for Pete's sake, so that's what we're gonna go with from here on out. Folks, these red veggies might just be the second best crop in the entire game, second only to the legendary potato. And since last night's pizza Biro had, had him thinking about tomato sauce proportions, he figured we'd talk about tomatoes in a video game today, and yup. That's how he runs this channel sometimes. That said, I'm not here to pull your leg. I'm not kidding when I say how good Toma Roots might just be. I mean, just take a look at what a simple cooked Toma Root could do for you. 20 health and 12.5 hunger a munch. That is practically identical to a cooked potato, mind you, minus a little less hunger. It's not bad. And even a Toma Roots crockpot dishes can go toe to toe with the potatoes at the end of the day. But just think of a potato being a healer with Toma Roots helping mend the mind. For you see, vegetable stinger here is very easy to make and will provide 25 hunger, 33 sanity, and 3 health to slurp. For a decent sanity food not to require some sort of dairy or sweetener is fairly rare, so take advantage. And if you want to get a little fancy with the two, then toss in an onion instead of ice for salsa fresca here. As you can see, the two are actually identical in restored stats, so work with what you got if you know what I mean. But it is kind of strange how they both don't impact temperature a little bit, like some other recipes out there. But hey, they're still good. And lastly, and even more fancy, Warley's Mokeka. Requiring a toma root, an onion, and a fish, it is definitely the odd one out in more ways than one, but it does do everything well, so it makes up for it. 112.5 hunger restored, 33 sanity returned, and 60 health regenerated instantly. Oh yes, it's good. If you've got the stuff for it, that is. Oh, but before we go and I completely forget about it, Toma Roots also go into Wigfrid's Rude Interlude nowadays, which helps her draw aggro to herself instantly, but this is definitely a lesser note for sure. Because far more importantly is how we can come across Toma Roots and how we can farm them efficiently from here on out. When planting random seeds, we have a 13.2% chance for it to grow into a Toma Root plant come autumn, an 8.2% chance in winter, which also happens to be the one season that Toma Roots don't like, mind you. A 12.4% chance comes spring, which ain't bad. And finally, a 15.7% chance comes summer, which is great. In fact, Toma Roots have some of the highest chances of growing from a random seed in the entire game. And in case you're wondering how to actually identify a Toma Root plant, here are how some of the stages look as they progress. So keep an eye out. But now, let's talk mass Toma root production, shall we? While farming specific crop seeds via birds is no longer as amazing as it was back in the day, it is still a one-to-one -one exchange that can get us on the right track to focusing a single crop of our choice. And that's the key. I personally believe in foregoing crop combinations and simply having a single crop be what takes up all of my farm plots. I think it's way easier, honestly. Make a 3x3 plot, plant your Toma root seeds if you've got them, tend to and water them at every stage you can for maximum stress relief, maintain nutrients if and when you need to for that exact same thing, and don't worry, I'll be talking more about this in a minute, and eventually, giant Toma roots will be yours. Well done. Get to hammering them, of course, and you will quickly learn why being a bit patient and focusing on one plant is so good nowadays. Your produce is gonna produce, if you know what I mean. Additional Toma root seeds and all. Have fun. But hold up, beard. What if we don't even know how to fertilize stuff, and how do we know what fertilizer Toma roots actually need in the first place? Well, for that first part, perhaps I should make a guide on it. For the second part, Toma roots need compost and growth formula, as that's what they take from the soil each stage, so you best learn up on wet slash dry compost in here, while also making a few bottles of growth formula starter. 
The latter has four stages to it, which can be sped up ever so slightly via water, or very quickly via toadstool, and you will get the bottles back when you use them too, which is great. But the note you should take here is that you should feed your farms of nine-ish crops before planting seeds, and then on the final stage of said crop growth, as if you do that, you should be golden. All of that said, however, I want to make this clear. You do not have to be perfect. A few points of stress is okay. Even more so, like six points of the stuff for Pete's sake. I overcrowded my crops here just to show you what would happen, and I still got two crop seeds from every plant. So it's not rocket science, folks. Stick to nine plants per plot, water them, tend them, and add some nutrients here and there at pretty much every stage, and you will be fine. But yes, there are indeed self-feeding farms, as they say, aka crop combinations, folks. In short, while Toma Roots quote-unquote eat growth formula and compost per cycle per plants, potatoes give both per cycle per plants, hence a self-feeding farm. Water, tend, and pretty much nothing else is needed for a completed giant crop combination, everybody. Now I get it, I'm sure a lot of this still confuses a lot of people out there, but seriously. Farming in this game becomes so much easier when you focus on a single crop per plot. If folks still need some help understanding farming though, I would be happy to make a guide through some of the stresses and all that someday. For now, though, that does it for Toma Roots. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, plow them fields, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.